Radhe Radhe everyone. Welcome to our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Nitinji, over to you. Thank you, Amitavani ji. And thank you, Padmani ji and Gayatri ji for a wonderful session and a beautiful meditation that was going, going on. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Radhe Radhe, good morning. Uh, good evening to all of you. Welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we will continue on the discussion that we are having and we will talk about what is the cause of grief and how we can eliminate it. Right? That is a science of work that Lord Krishna is talking about and like a good teacher, he sets the context, explains it and summarizes it as well okay? because he's the perfect teacher. So we will talk about it today and also have another engaging discussion on this topic. So again, a very warm welcome to all of you. If you are new to the session, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can put it on the chat or put it on the feedback tracker after the session. And that way we can uh, you know, get to know you and would love to hear from you as well. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we will get started. Um, okay. I hope you're able to see that. Yes. Great. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsachanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru All right. So Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening everyone. So let's get started. Um, pick up shloka and I'll pick up all the hands today. Okay, once I get enough entries, then we'll spin the wheel. Um, but let's follow the same process like we do every day today. Okay. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasya dhyatma chetasa Nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhya svavigata jvaraha. All right, whom do we have? Today we'll pick up a few hands. We don't have a hard stop. Should I take Samji first or should I give somebody else? <laughs> if we have new, somebody new, then we can otherwise. I am unmuted, <laughs> so I'll go. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chetasa Nirashi Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasva Vigata Jvaraha Radhe Radhe. Um, Radhe Radhe. Okay, let's take the remaining hands. Please go ahead, Sandhya Ji. Radhe Radhe. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chetasa Nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvaraha. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Sunita ji. Radhe. 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 Mai sarvani karmani sanyasyadhyatma chetis. Nirasi nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jwara Radhe Radhe. Wonderful, very nice Sunita ji. Good to see you back. Okay. Yes. Sagi ji. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you Radhe Radhe. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasat adhyatma chetasa Nirashir nirmamo bhutva yujyasva vigata jvaraha. Very nice, Pragiji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead, Aparnaji. Radhe Radhe. 
मयि सर्वाणि कर्माणि सन्यस्य ध्यात्म चेतसां निराशिर निर्ममो भूत्वा युद्धस्य विगत ज्वरः वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस थैंक यू श्याम जी प्लीज गो अहेड राधे राधे मयि सर्वाणि कर्माणि सन्यास्यात्म चेत सा निराशीर निर्ममो भूत्वा युद्ध स्व विगत ज्वर राइट विल टेक मे बी फोर मोर हैंड्स थ्री मोर हैंड्स लेट्स सी रिया जी प्लीज को है राधे राधे रिया जी राधे राधे मयि सर्वाणि कर्माणि सन्यात्म चेत निराशीर्निर्मो भूवा युद्ध स्व विगत ज्वर वंडरफुलट निराशेर्निर्मोभूत्वा ध्यात्म चेत सा निराशी निर्मो भूत्वा युद्ध स्व विगत ज्वर स्टार्टेड So in this shloka, Lord Krishna is saying, he is summarizing it basically. He is saying, performing all works as an offering unto me, constantly meditate on me as the supreme. Become free from desire and selfishness, and with your mental grief departed, fight. Fight in this case is perform your duty. So he is saying that. So we will again go through that hierarchy that I had spoken about. One key thing that he is talking about it constantly meditate upon me. it's an important concept right if we are not meditating upon god and meditating upon anything else then um we are going to have a symptomatic cure symptomatic cure means it may help provide symptomatic relief with regards to focus and you know having certain realizations uh maybe peace you know all that stuff that you feel and possibly siddhis also where you can do astral travel and stuff like that all those things will come but the quality of the mind will not improve that is the key thing okay when it says meditate on me as the supreme unless we meditate upon god right or think about god any other practice can give you symptomatic relief but the quality of the mind would still remain the same and when i say quality of the mind that means you still have to deal with the afflictions of the mind kaam krodh lobh moh greed anger envy all that stuff you cannot get rid of it from the root that is the importance of meditation on god so uh, it is explained like when you are when let, let's say a sarang there is a sarang uh, b honey bee which chases you okay so in order to avoid the sting of that bee you are running it keeps chasing you and then you get under water then the bee cannot come under water 
Okay, so you are saved. However, it is still hovering above the water. The moment you come out of the water, the bee is going to sting you again. So any other meditative practice which is not related to God is like going underwater. The moment you come out of samadhi or your meditation, world or maya will grip you again. Okay, that is how it goes. Okay, yes, Madhu Chandaji, you had a question before I get further. Please go ahead, Madhu Chandanji. It was, no, no, it was just uh, accidental. I okay, think. okay, no worries. No, Sri Ramayaji, is, is, is it twice accidental or intentional? Uh, no, intentional. The question is, uh, does this apply to, uh, like, what we hear these days of mindfulness meditation and all very meditation, meditate on the breath? So, so any meditation the... you meditate on breath you meditate on breath you meditate on light no matter what you do it will only give you symptomatic if you don't bring in God into the mix you are not improving the quality of your mind as simple as that Okay, you can go pretty advanced in your meditations but the quality of the mind or the vikars of maya you cannot get rid of it very simple for that Okay, there's no doubt about it. That is how our scriptures have explained. Because unless you meditate upon pure, God is not obliged to pure purify you, right? You can increase your focus and all that stuff, power of concentration and other things, all good things. You can play in the sattvic region, but you cannot go beyond sattva. Okay, even Maya is, has two aspects to it. Vidya Maya, Vidya Maya. A Vidya Maya, you can conquer through self-effort. Vidya Maya, you still have to become Sharnagat to God. But that's not the topic of our discussion. We need to go into a different... Yes, Kumarji, good to see you back, by the way. So, you, you wanted to say something? Radhe Radhe Nithanji, Amartavani Ji and everyone. Um, just want to mention that uh, I've tried different types of meditation. Again, I cannot say I'm uh, successful in any of them. But uh, once when I had gone through a difficult time... Um, I, I don't know why, but you know, at the time I kind of lost contact with God and um, some, somehow I didn't think of uh, God at the time. So I, ha I had this, suddenly I was searching internet and then I, I was doing some key search and then I found Brahma Kumaris, right? So I talked to one of them and I said, can I come and meet you? And then I talked to them. Then I went through their meditation course, it really helped me at the time. But there's something missing there, right? Now, then I found I found my sister uh, in Singapore and my sister-in-law in India doing something. They do a Ram Nam Jap for 15 minutes. And this is done 24 hours throughout the world. So and I, you know, my Ishta Dev is Hanuman. And of course, when Hanuman is there, Ram is there as well, right? So whenever I, even I don't need to sit down and meditate, whenever I think of uh, Sri Ram and just do Ram Nam Japa. It's like a meditation to me. It puts me at peace. It's such a beautiful experience. True. So that's what I want to share beautiful. with you. Folks. I'm glad you shared it with us. And when you when you actually do that Japa with remembrance, loving devotion of remembrance, it will quadruple that effect, exponentially increase that effect. Now you are bringing, trying to bring its form into the mind as well. That is because God said that I, I have put all of my powers in my name. Right? So if you are feeling thirsty and you say water, 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 nothing will happen. It will not quench your thirst. But when you have spiritual thirst and you say Ram, 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 Krishna, 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 right? Then it will start quenching your thirst. That is the power in God's name. Okay, it's not an ordinary. If you say any other name, it will not have that effect. But if you say that name with faith and belief, of course, it will have that transformative effect. And and you can try it. You know, we have tried this. You try chanting it out and see what happens. Very powerful. Anyways, let's get into the topic today. We have a lot to cover. So God has given us a science of work where he starts off by saying that uh, we'll come back to any other questions because we have some stuff to cover. So let's continue. So the topmost position is state of mind is fixed or your mind on me alone. In this one, he's saying and surrender your intellect to me. Then he starts making concessions, right? We have gone through this error. He says, if you cannot do that, then 
you know you cannot fix your mind steadily on me arjun then practice remembering me with devotion while constantly restraining the mind from worldly affairs then try to you know concentrate focus your mind mind on me with loving devotion and restrain from worldly affairs right a worldly affair means you know perusing the news channel worrying about the world gossiping fault finding all that stuff he said if if you can't even do that then you know at least remember me with devotion if you cannot do that then try to work for me and you work as a devotional service to me even that will give you the stage of perfection and then he said even if you cannot work for me then at least give up the fruits of your actions okay and be situated in the self and then of course the next one is if if you can't even do that then at least work okay don't just shun work that is the hierarchy that goes this is the science of work god has given i've just given you the entire hierarchy of things that we can apply in our life and right from the realistic state or the state that we are in right now all the way up to the perfection that we have to reach and then we spoke about that whatever we do in this world you know from sleep to work and back to sleep we are under the influence of these three gunas and the only time these gunas they release their grip over us is when we are doing devotional service when we are doing seva right because at that point you are transcending gunas and you are actually connecting with divine gunatit shuddh sattva uh, and beyond which is beyond the three gunas that is the only time you do that and that is why uh, seva is very important okay now let's look at the steps that god has not steps but the three instructions he has given forth is of course to perform the duty so what he is saying is in his typical style as you would see throughout bhagavad gita now lord krishna expounds on a topic and then finally presents the summary okay he starts he paints a very compelling vision of what where we need to go like a great leader or a guru the various scenarios and then gives the summary and no wonder because he is the perfect teacher we do that you know krishnam vande jagat guru he is a original teacher he is a teacher of the teacher as well he is god he knows teaching process better than any of us and that's why he is teaching arjun perfectly okay and as part of his teaching let's see what he is saying so these are the four instructions three instructions fourth is to perform duty anyways so let's see what he is saying he is saying the first perform all works as an offering to me then he is saying constantly meditate on me as the supreme no devi devtas or anybody else see meditation is what meditation is persisting a thought for an extended period of time that is what meditation is and if you truly think about it we are all meditating throughout the day but the problem is we are meditating on the world so when you are thinking about something you are worrying or thinking about a person or thinking about a scenario or playing out a fear scenario or anxiety scenario you are actually meditating on the world so we are meditating all the times so the other meditation it takes a bit of an effort because you have to withdraw your mind from the world but that is also a meditation and god is saying constantly meditate on me as the supreme basically karma yoga is basically telling us the science when how do you meditate on god for us to reach that perfection we have to start building that incrementally and associating your work is a great stepping stone when you say whatever i am doing i am doing it for your pleasure and i will offer my fruit to you okay i'll just put in my best and offer it to you that is why karma yoga is a stepping stone to gain or take uh, make progress towards this consciousness then he says become free from this is very important one desire and selfishness right the desire i want this okay this whole universe is by created by god to fulfill my desires that mindset right this whole universe is should be serving me or universe should be serving me or i would take service from god because god why are you not doing it for me okay that's not the reason we are not unfortunately it may be news for you but we are not the center of the universe for that matter even earth is not the center of the universe for that matter even our universe is not the center of the universe okay so forget about us being the center of the universe so our situation is to fulfill the purpose of the creation itself and play our tiny part in it okay so this universe was not created that you know first 
God said, okay, let me create humans and then say, what will humans do? So let me create world so that they can fulfill their desires. That was never the purpose to begin with, okay? And if you think that we are highly misplaced, that needs to be corrected. So when we do from desire and selfishness, this is the biggest problem, okay? That is the root cause for all the grief that happens in this world. Why do we have a grief? There is a desire. The cycle starts all right. This thing is going to give me happiness. Okay, now you start repeating that story in your head. This thing will give me happiness. This thing will give me happiness. This thing, until it becomes very natural to you. Now, it has become an obsession. This thing will not give you, this thing has to give me happiness. Now, it has become an obsession. Once it has become an obsession, because our repeated thought process, now we become enslaved to that particular thing. Now, I have to have it. And if you don't have it, two possibilities, you'll have it or you don't have it. If you have it, you'll need more of it. Then other set of stress, challenges and struggles would start. And if you don't have it, you'll become angry, upset. You know, you'll have that uh, bitterness about the world and resentment that, you know, why did this not happen and this and that. So all that cycle keeps on repeating. How did it start? From the desire. Now repeated thought process. Why do we feel enslaved to that thought process? We only created it. Nobody else did it for us. Now those grooves are formed, neural channels are formed. And now that process starts coming very normally and naturally to your head. So you were in the state of peace. You created an agitated, basically agitated state of mind. And now for you to be back in the same peace that you are there, now you have to put in effort. So who was the responsible for it? Us only. How did it start? By desiring something. What did you desire? Some worldly thing. And one of the spiritual principles about this world is it has not, the world does not have an ability to give us the satisfaction, happiness and bliss that we are seeking for. It doesn't have it. It's not that this world, world is at fault. It doesn't have it. So when we seek happiness from the world or a worldly object, it's like a beggar approaching another beggar for money. It cannot give it. You know, it's a very naive expectation to expect that happiness from some object, person and stuff like that. And if that person is not giving, then we become angry and upset at that person only, right? Reminds me of that movie where this guy, Shah Rukh Khan, used to chase a girl and if girl is not there, now I'm going to kill that girl. Okay. What kind of a jokery is that, right? I mean, what kind of a mindset is that? And first of all, it is not love to begin with, right? One of the definitions of love is when you have a reason for the love to finish and still it doesn't finish. And another definition for love is eternal forgiveness, right? So we are not even there, but the point is it all starts with desires and our repeated thought process where we put ourselves in trouble and then the struggle begins to get out of that trouble. And the grief is caused by this only. Grief is what Lord Krishna is tackling here. And then the fourth, he says, once you do these top three things, then your mental grief departed now fight do your duty now you are in a stable state of mind even to perform your mundane worldly or prescribed duties but for you to reach that stable state you have to do all these three things you have to build that consciousness of thinking about god doing work for his offerings as with the spirit of sacrifice not that or oh, you know what God can do for me, but like that dialogue is there in the movie, right? What you don't ask what country has done for you, ask what you have done for the country. So you we don't ask God can God do for me. We ask God, God, what can I do for you? And then when we become free from desire and selfishness, then the grief will evaporate. There is no scope for grief at that point. And then you can perform things with a state of equanimity. So if you look at it essentially, grief, right? It is actually a combination of things when we offer it to ourselves, right? We are doing it for ourselves. Thinking of the world. I'm just taking the opposite of what Lord Krishna is saying. Why grief happens when we offer things to ourselves, not to God. When we think of the world, not of God. And we have a desire and selfishness as a, a motive behind that particular act. When we have that, it will definitely result in grief. And then when you get over that, then you get over grief and perform your duty. So this is the simple science Lord Krishna is offering around this concept. Let's move on. Now, Adhyatma Chetasa in this particular verse, it means with the thoughts resting on God. Now, thoughts resting on God is like 
by the way hope you like simple but wrong complex but right okay so with this is where the bhed chal herd mentality is taking the left side of things right where the world goes other one if you understand these concepts these are the right ones okay now adhyatma chetasa means the thoughts resting on god thoughts resting on god is a it's like um a bead you know you've seen the mala or a necklace of beads resting upon that string there are so many beads but what is the basis of that necklace that underlying thread right so it's resting upon it similarly whatever you do yat karoshi adnashi right lord says whatever you do whatever you do, just offer it to me that is the mindset we need to start building then sanyas means renouncing all activities that are not de dedicated to him it's a pretty loaded thing and then nirashi means without hankering for the results of the action which is nothing but karm yoga where you relinquish the results of the action because that is something you don't control it is a variable of so many things including part of it your destiny as well others efforts timing others prarab lot of factors are in others hard work around the same thing so many factors are in play okay moving on now the consciousness that we are talking about here of dedicating all actions to god requires let's see what does it require now okay it requires claim to proprietorship forsaking means we have to give up this is the biggest problem the sense of proprietorship mind you know this thing is mine this house is mine this relationship is mine um all this stuff actually brings us a sense of proprietorship my car my house my bank balance and my relatives my kid my spouse my parents my friends all that stuff if we truly think about it they are all temporary and they can be snatched away in a moment can you claim that you can hold on to any of it permanently you cannot it can be snatched away in a moment okay so even the people around us if you look at it they are divine souls on a temporary sojourn with us it's like a temporary journey they are on with us like the train journey we speak about everybody has a ticket we form an association some of the best friend friendships short lasting friendships during that journey and then we all depart in our respective stations nobody accompanies anybody because they have their own destination and an own own travel ticket with a certain uh, exit and that is life is also like that but here in this case we form such strong attachments uh, that uh, that makes us basically uh, not have that spirit of sacrifice around anything you we 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 are not able to dedicate it to god because we dedicate it to people around in you know for my father for this for relative this that and in every lifetime we keep on finding two three people that make us repeat in this world again okay we don't need a whole village or a town to get attached to just one person is good enough and it could be a pet also by the way you don't even need a person to repeat in this world just one thing one object in this world is good enough for you to repeat that's it so god says ananya chintayantu man yojana paryupase ananya chintayantu exclusivity is what he's asking for which is a pretty high state but at least now with that we are reading bhagavad gita we should understand the expectations around it and and start doing the best that we can do around this concept yes monica ji you had a question you didn't like something i said no no i love everything you say nitin ji <laughs> radhe radhe <laughs> radhe radhe go ahead uh so basically um like you said a pet is more than enough for you to get back to this world right uh so being a being a mother i mean for for your spouse you can still be practical but mother is i don't know i mean if you're still attached to your son or daughter you know then will is that also counted i'm sure it is counted but, but of course but of course <laughs> Keep keep on changing. Your milestones will keep on shifting. I'm telling you. First, it was my mother and father. Okay, girls are normally attract more attached to their dads and boys with moms. Usually that happens. Oh, okay, they are our lives. You know, perfect. Then you get married. Oh, spouse is the life. Okay, my that is they say right. That parrot keeps on changing. There was a mm -hmm. king right whose life used to reside in a parrot. Yes. Then though nobody could kill that king until somebody told you know the secret of killing them is to twist the neck of that cat parrot and it will go. So similarly, our parrot keeps on shifting. First, it starts with parents. Then you may find a spouse or a 
boyfriend or a girlfriend okay that okay we will die if we don't get it after that it becomes your kid right and then you get a second kid and then a second kid may you know the the a younger one or the whoever it is so it keeps on shifting basically but the point is the rule is wherever your attachment is that's where you would go so if your attachment is with the kid god may arrange to send you you know in some form or manner where you may have to you are created a karmic backlog that you'll have to fulfill because god says like an indulgent father be my guest you make a resolve when you need me until then i am in no hurry because i have seen you since so many manvantars you know since time eternity the day you exclusively want me then i am ready for you till that time you take your you feel free to move around however you wish okay so but okay. kids with kids of course it's a very deep relationship and you know pets they don't even respond back kids you can develop detachment when they start giving you answers back you know as they grow up but pets they don't even do that right hmm. so the real way of looking at it is they come through you it's an it's an honor and a privilege to serve them not hold them and then think okay my life depends upon them because end of the day they also have their own journey right it's right. in this particular life they have picked you up abhimanyu when he died arjun cried a lot okay divine leelas they do that and then krishna took him to some um, planet moon to show him okay what's going on he said i wanted to i'm still not able to get to grips with the demise of my young son the way he was killed so he said all right let me give you a closure he took him to abhimanyu you know he had gone back to uh, his father i think in chandralok and he had come to prithvi lok only for a duration of 16 years okay that was mm-hmm. part of his leela so he gave, he said son then abhimanyu looks back at him said hey, which son in so many lives i have been your son and you have been my son and all that stuff so which son are you talking about so soul doesn't have a relationship only wow. relationship that we have the soul has is with god he is the only sambandhi we'll talk about it rest all is what if you had a memory which god luckily doesn't give us you will freak out okay this person was this and now <laughs> what relationship it's all temporary right it's just a role that you are playing on a stage that's all nothing else that conscious that knowledge has to be repeated in our head so that we are not building unnecessary at you know strings you still perform your responsibility of course you'll feel for them right we are we are humans and all that argument is fine but if you are attached then you'll of course have to follow them if you they go to uh, a yoni of becoming a donkey you'll have to become a donkey along with them it's as simple as that so it's very risky proposition so we'll come back to you kumar ji let's continue uh, the discussion that we are having so yeah so the point here is the sense of proprietorship in mind what is mind we really have to think about this part okay very deeply first of all who am i and what is mind right because i'm thinking of myself as a body then all these extensions of our body you know my this thing my that thing that starts happening actually if you think about it who is our true who is a true sambandhi not your cousin brother cousin sister maasi chacha taya right sambandhi means who who accompanies you throughout who never leaves you unconditional that is true nate right true sambandhi and who is there who who can actually do that does do they have an ability nobody has it right i can i mean tatva gyan wise so maybe you can sing a bhajan around that when you depart you know the same relative say okay burn this person off quickly okay we can't hold it back for any more right and even the son and the most dearest person will also take three or four rounds whatever it is and then they will say okay let's move on in life that is the reality of life the only thing that accompanies you is god he has to accompany you he has no choice so basically we are so stubborn and so adamant that we are increasing god's work by not realizing god okay every birth he has to repeat with us and keep log of karma and keep providing for us gracing us making us meet a guru and stuff like that so we are increasing his work because we are adamant that we will desire world only we will always keep on finding that one person in every life and that invariably is what what happens so no matter what it is we have to look at it in perspective to cut the long story short is the message okay child or whoever now let's move on um renouncing all desire for personal gain hankering and lamentation is what god is talking about here so if you look at it you know distress loss defeat happiness gain victory all that stuff we have to you know equanimous around it because all of it is temporary now you would say that you know it becomes so boring god is saying don't be happy don't be this if i am not supposed to party i am not supposed to enjoy 
Am I not feel you supposed to feel happy about it and stuff like that? Of course not. Let's look at it through an example. Okay. We, when you look at this thing, okay, I, I'm not supposed to be happy and if not even stressed, then what's the point of being a human? Right? Does it mean I become dull and just look at a wall and do nothing? No, that's not the case. And I'll try to explain as best as I can through an ex example and an analogy. Okay. What do you get in return when you try to do follow these principles? When God is saying, Sukha Dukha, you know, some just handle like you handle Sheetoshna Ushna Sukha Dukha, basically like winters and summers, they come and go. So have a sense that, you know, I'm not going to ride my success too much because if I do that, that means I'm going to get upset during my failure. The other day I was seeing part of that is a series that came in, you know, my wife is showing me in um, romantics or something like that. And one of that, the director was saying, you know, I had decided that I'm not going to take success too seriously because if I'll do it, then I'll not, I'll, I'll prep, not be ready for the failure. I said, wow, you know, what a, what a thought kind of a deal. Now what happens when we do that? Let's try to understand it. Okay. It doesn't mean you become dull and boring. So let's talk about a concept. I hope you like this mouse. Yeah. It's a nice mouse, okay. So here's a mouse. It decided that I'm feeling hungry today. Okay, so, and somebody told him, you know, as the grapevine or the rumor was that there's a new go down that has opened up in town, which has a lot of stuff, a lot of grain that you can have, okay. So this mouse apparently finds that go down, okay, full of grains. And that is where it is venturing into, okay. However, there is a rice puff outside that go down. Okay. And as the luck would have it, it falls for it and gets trapped. Now, what would be your, what would be your, what would you advise this rat? Now let's open it up and understand this concept. What would you advise this rat? Yes, Shamji, you're smiling again. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. As always, you make us more more better than a mouse. <laughs> Our community is like a mouse only. As you want to tell us that we are going after those material things like this, like this mouse. We know there's God around us, with us, for us. But still, getting trapped in rice is what all you want. So, we understand that I am That's what the point is. Radhe, Radhe. Kind of, yes. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Rahul. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, I will forward the Zoom link of daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita classes to the rat so that he can get the correct knowledge and go for the go down. Yeah. So, yeah, the point is uh, there's a big go down waiting for us. Okay. That is what God will give when we align to these principles, but we cannot resist the temptation of riding these small pleasures or craving for those small pleasures. So when God says, don't get too distressed or too high euphoric, you know, just learn to tolerate both like a passing phase. Then what God gives you in return, of course, from within, because he's seated within, is much higher pleasure than you would have gotten otherwise when you were enjoying that success. Okay, so what you get in return is much higher. But we are not able to cross that because like this rat, that rice puff is so enticing that we are trapped at that level only. And we just want to enjoy more and more of it, even though we are getting trapped there. Okay, while there is a whole go down waiting for us, the possibilities that it opens up, we are not willing to go past that trap. And that trap is nothing but what we are doing right now. And that is where Bhagavad Gita puts it in perspective. Say, just learn to tolerate both and see what happens. And if you'll do that, you'll understand it. So that is the whole idea. This trap is nothing but that temptation, short-lived temptation that we are not able to resist. Okay. And God says, if you can somehow resist it, you know, trust me on that. Then God is not Kanjus Makhichus, who's, who's actually said that, you know, you come here as humans just give up, you know, all the kind of happiness that you think is here and lead a dull, boring life and move off. Of course, he's going to give you something in return as well. When he's putting a condition, um, he he's obligated to give something to us in return. And that return is, 
you can compare it against that go down versus rise puff that we are looking at okay let's see i can see a couple of other end and that will lead us to the topic that i'm going to pose another question and have a bit of a discussion on as well yes sandhya uh, Radhe, actually i mean i there is nothing to add but i wanted to say this mouse on the left is very cute and i feel sad for it that it is not choosing the right thing so it should get a guru and i guess once it gets it then it will know what is the right thing to do and uh, i also wanted to follow up on uh, what uh, uh, monica ji had asked i i don't know if i'm thinking it right but i just wanted to put it across um like uh, guru like swami ji is also our spiritual father right and being the parent like he's kind of an ideal parent that way who is loving and caring but still not attached to us so as a parent one can kind of see him as an ideal and learn that how one can true. like love their kids the best way and not very true. the way he deals with us is how a parent should deal with their kids as well he'll give you love he'll give you affection he will guide you and at the same time he will tell you what is the right thing for you to do right and at the same time he's not weeping for every second person oh my god i have to leave you for six months and then when am i going to meet you again no, of course not all that melodrama is played in the head of the conditioned souls they just understand it a higher and their compassion is better and higher than the material compassion that we feel for our relatives it is a binding and a, um, what do you call the binding kind of an affection and a compassion that we feel what they feel saints they it is a liberating and an uplifting compassion that they have and ours is conditional theirs is selfless look at the love stories in this world right how they break even before they have started they'll break and the best of intention they are the worst of enemies within a span of no time okay this is the hypocrisy of this world and like uh, ramadas had said that the biggest problem of this world is that we are too busy hanging on to our unworthiness okay and we are still not we are still happy that whatever we are doing is fine okay just looking at options reasons to justify it as opposed to seriously thinking about working on it right and god is so kind and compassionate if we do these kind of things in material world you know you we know how what kind of punishments are there but god is like okay all right i've seen you you know i'll give it you in an incremental manner so that you can digest it kind of a deal so anyway this rat has found guru also in multiple lifetimes but still he, that this rat chooses that trap only because it is pleasurable immediately perceptible okay so that is the lesson now the question that i'm going to pose is selfishness is the cause of all grief in this world right there's a saying in english that if i won't think about myself who else will but however if that is all i do then who am i okay so under this pretext like this rat uh, we we basically the grief is caused by this uh, element of selfishness in us okay now that is the question i'm posing but let me add something more to it as well okay before we open it up actually selfishness is not a bad thing the problem happens where the selfishness is misplaced okay it is super misplaced why that selfishness is related to the body not for our real identity and the topic that we were discussing is when we truly understand that that i and my true i is the soul and my true mind is god and guru only then the problem will be automatically solved the problem is first of all we don't consider ourselves as a soul we think you know going after sensual pleasures or pleasures of the world and objects of the world will give me happiness that's the first problem second we think this world to be ours you know relatives friends parents and everybody and not that god and guru are the only people who will move with us the journey afterwards when we move away from this world god has to go along with us and a guru if you have met a saint in any of your life he will also not leave your hand until you have crossed over this ocean that means these are the only two entities which are our true sambandhi or relatives the rest all are just temporary roles and positions that god has given us to uh, in a particular lifetime because of the past karmic baggage and a lot of other factors as well all right with that i'll open it up uh, any questions uh, on this selfishness is the cause of all grief 
I think that is the root cause. So any thoughts, suggestions, remarks on what we have discussed so far? The, there was a question actually, what is grief? Is it grief matlab is what the question was in the comment. Grief is like lamenting or feeling sad about something, not being happy or 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 having a feeling that you know you have missed out on something or you have lost somebody or uh, you know life has given me a raw deal. So grief can take many forms around it. It's about feeling sad and usually depressed or upset. All that can be clubbed as a grief. Thank you. When, when you're um, where you thought you would get happiness, that, that gets obstructed in some form or manner. It could be losing somebody in life. It could be not getting that desired object. It could be not getting what you thought you should have gotten in life. In so many ways, grief can come. Samji? Uh, Radhe Radhe Nitinji. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, difference between temptations and desires? Temptations and in desire. the uh, in the example of mouse also, it has to survive. Without food, it cannot survive. And it went after the dry rice puff. God will provide its food, and God only has provided its food in the form of rice puff. And it fell into the trap because it doesn't know. So, mm -hmm. So doesn't know is not an excuse. Ignorance is not a bliss. I Did you attend yesterday's session carefully? Mm -hmm. Ignorance is not a bliss. Okay, We spoke about this concept. How will it know that there is a trap? How will it know? <laughs> that, that is where knock-knock is happening throughout, right? That is why we are reading this scripture. We get We have found guru also multiple times in life. But if we are stubborn in our thought process, even guru cannot, it can take us to water but cannot make us drink, right? Bhagavad Gita, the very first thing is telling us we are a soul. Guru tells us that we have we have to make you know those sense sensory objects basically. It's like putting fuel to fire. All these concepts are told so many times to us, right? So then we cannot claim foul that God we did not know. We always remain ignorant. What else can Guru and God do other than facilitating this process so many times in our life where that knowledge keeps coming in, but we don't make it a priority or we don't adhere to it or we don't, we refuse to understand it. You're still not, I mean, you still did not get the question, I think. See, it doesn't know that it is a trap, but still it has to survive. It has to have its food. That's why it went there. Now you are hung up in this rat story only or you are choosing to ignore the big picture here, basically. Uh, food is there. I mean, God is saying your food. Do your other God is saying your food will be provided for. Okay, now it's not a rat; it's a human. It's an analogy. Okay, don't oversimplify it in your head just to support something. Okay, as humans, God has given us that we have something bigger waiting for you. Okay, you should not succumb to this. Now, rat cannot be faulted for that, but because it didn't know, first thing it saw, it went for it. But as a human. God is giving us knowledge and explaining it as well. Okay. But we refuse to answer it or we refuse to um, align to those principles, even after knowing that knowledge is essentially what I'm trying to say. Let don't compare yourself with the rat in this case. Okay. Then should we give up both temptations as well as desires? Of course, that no, dovetail it. Temptations Temptation, also we have to do. temptation to meet God. Desire to serve God. Who's asking you to give it up? Just dovetail it. How many times have you spoken about yes. this concept? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Higher desires. You need to dovetail it to something better, which is uplifting for you, not something which is making your mind more corrupt and dirty. Right? Essentially what God is saying. Okay. So don't compare with rat, okay? And if you get stuck with rat that, you know, it got the, and it will not take us far. Yes. Uh, Shamji, I know uh, today we have uh, Jyoti who's going to announce certain stuff as well. So Jyoti will give you the last five minutes or so. We can take probably a couple of hands in the meantime. And then after that, we'll continue. Yeah, it's my Radhe Radhe. I was just thinking on a lighter note that it's enough of rats and donkeys and monkeys for us now. I remember a day when you when you give examples of human being or hum jo hai so log baithe hue hain hamara naam kabhi aayega because i know what you are trying to tell us in the form of the animals and i'm sure we all know where we stand and we all know where we have to go 
So the day is not too far when when we will replace ourselves with these animals and we we know what is our right path, right right way. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Shamji, are you saying that we need to be treated with more respect and better examples? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we want to be replaced now because itna padne ke baad bhi agar hum log we are just trying to live a life like animals. That it's no point coming and attending the sessions. No, it is and some, some way, some way we should be behave like. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the point. Is I totally that get is. your analogy examples. I love them. Trust you me. And this, this, this at times hits us. Hits. I'm saying hit me so hard that it's tough to get out at times. But I really love it the way you uh, tell us the way we all are behaving at times. Not at times, always. It really hits me at times. So. We all should know where we stand, and we all should know where we have to go. That was my point. I have no issues with the examples. I you can go. Just... Us, you can take us anywhere down. It will only help us grow, go much higher. As you have a, you know, a spring ball. The more hard you hit, the more high it goes. That's what my point is. That it's good for us that you're hitting us so hard that we all know what is the height of our where we can go, and there are no limits for us to go anywhere. Good. I, I'm I'm glad you are able able to. Uh, take the key message out of it because uh, that also takes a bit of a receptivity around it. So it's not about it. See these examples Swamiji gives, you know, just casually while while he's speaking. But I find them very, very hard hitting. That is why I bring it up and I try to make it even more hard hitting by putting it in visuals. Okay. If you hear it simply, it's like, okay, he said something. So these are helpful as long as we are receptive to improve. But if we block that part and we are only always in the reconfirmation bias of justifying ourselves, then even this knowledge will get blocked. But I'm glad you are able to see it in correct right and you are getting the gist out of what we are trying to say here. That's a whole idea. Great point, Shamji. Thank you so much. Yes, Sandhya. Sandhya Yeah, um, so actually there are two comments. One is from Manisha Bhati ji. She says, uh, just want to say it's so heart-wrenching to know it in deep, but it is good to understand this as soon as possible. This topic is eye-opening and so intense. Grateful for today's session. Thank you uh, so much. Yeah, We'll make it a little more intense um, around uh, the pleasure that we think are supposedly pleasure, what those truly are. Okay, I've spoken about that concept, but I'll... I'll um, I'll bring in uh, another session, one of the future sessions, just to drive home that point. Because what we think is pleasure is actually not good for us. And we don't know the damage that it is causing to us. Uh, so I'm glad you're able to pick up the key concept here. And, and that was the whole idea of having this discussion and putting it in visual. So thank you so much. And there is one more comment from Monica Ji. Um, mm -hmm. Best is to follow the mantra by Nitin Ji in whatever we do. Think that if it is going to please my kana or not, and then do it. Yes, it's given to us by Maharaj and Swamiji, so I'm just facilitating it. But yeah, you can trust me that there is no uh, my own factor in any of the stuff that I present here. Everything is verbatim as it is coming from them, okay? Uh, because it's so powerful, this knowledge is so powerful that, uh, uh, you know, it will be like belittling it if I put in my, you know, my own thing into it. So it's everything is coming directly from them. I just put it as it is, you know, what I've heard from them. And it is very empowering knowledge. If you listen to it with open mind and faith, it is like, okay, oh, you know, there's nothing better I can do to myself or hear and understand, you know, it, it's amazing, this knowledge for sure. And last question from my side. Uh, so grief comes out of selfishness. But compassion comes out of selflessness, True. right? And compassion it, will never... Spiritual leave. compassion comes out of selflessness. A material compassion will also come in a disguise of selflessness, but it is truly selfish only. And that, I mean, that then, yeah, just to follow up. So the material compassion so far will lead to grief, but a spiritual compassion will never lead to grief, right? It will not lead to grief. That's material compassion. So oh my God, how bad and this and that happened to you know what? And people will cry and, you know, forcefully cry and all that stuff. That is material compassion. Spiritual compassion, you understand. You know, when spiritual compassion is born, stems from the fact that every soul needs help. You know, they are struggling. They don't know. They may not acknowledge, but they are struggling. And that is where the spiritual compassion is coming from, Guru. So 
they look at it in perspective at the same time they do understand that soul has to learn its own lessons sometimes the hard way as well so they understand the big picture they try to help but they don't get don't get sucked into it themselves that you know they are depressed listening to somebody's story that doesn't happen prabhat ji okay um, yeah let's hear and then we can do jyoti no worries we can do it after 5 minutes as well no problem at all okay. go ahead i just want to uh, yeah i just want i just have one comment like rather than being uh, selfish we can consider ourselves as fish in the ocean and uh, we are in the ocean of uh, god so we need water like uh, god's uh, uh, god's love for uh, ourselves so it's like rather than i just uh using that word self selfish to self fish you can say how to say that okay self shell fish okay yeah. there used to be saying in yeah. english right she sells she mm-hmm. shells on the seashore so that shell fish you are talking about huh? okay. chandra ji yeah very nice Thank you for very waiting. nice analogy yes uh... right gradually uh, i would recommend this uh, little mouse to pick up some jk yog online classes so that it will pick up some shlokas <laughs> uplift yourself don't degrade yourself and uh, sacrifice your lower natures so that you can get to the whole go down full of grains over there and you can get the bigger you know bliss that's all i had to say just reminded me of those shlokas radhe radhe very nice yes radhe radhe chandra ji thank you okay kumar ji please go ahead radhe radhe kumar ji radhe radhe everyone uh, so my advice to the rat would be to do japa of uh, shri ram's name um which i have found uh, to be so um empowering and uh, mesmerizing right no uh, no lord is purer than shri ram and uh, whenever you say his name uh you know difficulties just disappear right well not exactly but you get the strength to face all difficulties so uh, that's that's what i would think thank you yeah. difficulties will they be there but you will be more equipped to handle that right so that is the key very nice yes uh, prashant please go, go ahead, ahead please uh thank you radhe radhe nitin ji radhe radhe everyone uh actually <laughs> whatever i wanted to say to that is already being discussed here you know <laughs> already the participants said uh regarding uh what you said you know nitin ji you said like the relationships and the you know those kind of things like it turns into love and hate like that i really wanted to discuss on that particular topic but that will take a bit of long time so i don't want to talk that right now because that may take a bit of minutes so, uh, so if I, you can explain to... if you can explain it in 30 seconds then i can answer no, in 30 seconds no too. i cannot explain it in 30 seconds it takes at least 2 minutes to ask the question so okay, i'll so we'll come back to you time. time permitting we'll come back to that question Okay. or i dropped you can let's connect offline as well okay on this but let's hear okay. manoranjan ji maybe we'll come back to you after the announcements uh, that pooja makes uh, jyoti makes rather i don't know why i call her pooja so yes manoranjan ji wanted to say something kabir ji is doha on this one and then we'll come back to you prashanta we can hear out your question go ahead manoranjan ji uh, very relevant kabir the doha kabir couple am i audible yes you are hello am i audible yes 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 yeah. sure so yeah uh, uh, very interestingly actually i would like to share a relevant kabir uh, relevant to the topic today so sant kabir is saying aasa gai trishna miti man hua be parwa aasa gai trishna miti मन हुआ बेपरवा जिसका कछु नहीं चाहिए वही है सहन साह कबीरा वही है सहन साह संत कबीर इज सेइंग दैट हु इज एक्चुअली बात सहन साह और द किंग सो वी लॉस्ट जस्ट एट द राइट मोमेंट 
I don't know when the. So I think Manojan will come back. Yeah, I think what he was saying is the richest person in this world is not the one who has the most number of things, but richest is the one who has the least number of desires. So that is how it goes. And I think on desires, there's a beautiful share that uh, Maharaj said. He said that. खूब तरसाया है तेरी ख्वाहिशों ने ही तुझे खूब तरसाया है तेरी ख्वाहिशों ने ही तुझे अब तू ही कुछ ख्वाहिशों को तरसता ही छोड़ दे दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम वी आर नॉट एबल टू लीव आर डिजायर एंड कीप ऑन क्रिएटिंग एजेंडा न्यूअर एंड न्यूअर वंस ओके सो विद दैट ओवर टू यू ज्योति फॉर द अनाउंसमेंट यू वॉन्टेड टू मेक एंड वेल कम बैक टू प्रशांत क्वेश्चन something very very interesting question i'm very sure about it okay so i'm looking forward to it yes go ahead jyoti thank so can you please make me co-host you are co-host uh, jyoti ji i have made you the co-host okay I see a lot of Canva here. I thought I'm just trying to just go in the presentation mode. But you opened up the Canva, which I'm liking a lot. Ah, uh, why it's not taking the thing? Okay, it's it's asking me to present it. Yeah. Radhe, Radhe. Ah. Uh, so we have a participate participant award uh, for two weeks so for the uh, week uh, in the february from 13 to 17 february uh, best comeback award goes to ratna ji and uh, best recitation award goes to swadra and shri ramya ji the mom and son, son duo and to sandhya ji she all with every time whenever we have a uh, notice she she is amazing when it comes to recitation and best debut participation award uh, for especially for recitation goes to kalyam ji and j krishna ji and for the next week for uh, i mean for uh, february 28 to 24 best comeback award goes to deyashni ji and recitation best recitation award goes to riya ji lakshmi ji and meena ji um and best debut participation award go to goes to kishor ji chandru ji and goop chand ji now coming back to coming to a uh, best discussion award for the week for uh, february 13 to 17 goes to surender ji ashwin ji and payal ji and best debut uh, singing award goes to sonali ji ashutosh ji golab ji and best bhajan singing award goes to himani ji our night angel and aparna ji so night angel needs to be converted to nightingale oh yes oh yeah right yeah yeah my well no worries but himani got it okay so we understood it plus uh, i corrected but still i no worries the mistake this time no worries <laughs> and uh, for the week uh, uh, for the For twentieth to twenty fourth February, uh, best discussion award goes to Urvi ji, Sam ji, Sashmita ji, Swarna ji. Best debut bhajan bhajan singing award goes to Surya Prakash ji, and best bhajan singing award goes to our Sandhya ji. Wow. And we have few more. Do you want to keep it? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, do you need to go ahead? We can just dis display the slides, and I think that's fine with their video on. I can yeah. see quite a few. You know. Yeah, which is a good have, sign. Exactly, yeah. I have to reduce it to the to to this number. So I uh so be there are few people who always keep their video on, and these are the names who I, I have or most of us I have seen that uh they were uh on and off for some time. So this is for the week from February thirteen to seventeen, and it reduced further. I mean, so uh, uh, we have tried to narrow it down to the people who who try to keep their video on once or twice in a week. So that's good. I think that's definitely uh, very encouraging. So thank you, whoever is doing it consistently. That definitely helps. <laughs> I would encourage all of you to do that. 
not only it will help your team, but helps with the engagement as well. Now that we have so many people who turn it on. So thank you so much. You can see it in the name, so you don't have to say it one by one. Yeah, and I, exactly. otherwise the slide, whole slide will be was full of names. Sure. Are we good then? Yeah. Thank you so much, Jyoti. And the best uh, pair of eyes around all that stuff, that award goes to Jyoti. Okay, so thank you so much for that, tracking it and, you. and uh, you know, bringing it to the session itself. Thank you so much, Jyoti, for that. Okay, so do we have, we can quickly take Prashanta ji, your question, and then we'll move to our devotional segment. Session is over, but you're welcome to stay back, maybe a bhajan, if somebody's interested, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Prashanta, if you are there, uh, we can take your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Uh, I think uh, I have taken more time. One quick Actually, your time starts now. Okay, fair enough. Uh, actually, regarding this topic, you know, I am quite quite confused right from my teenage years, right? When I saw this kind of relationship, like love-hate relationship, I was actually confused because I always felt that love is not relationship and relationship is not love because the people who are in relationship may not be in love and people who are in love may not be in relationship. You know, the person that you love, you may not get married to that person and marriage does not justify the love right so relationship and love are not the same things and since valentine day's topic you know i i have been you know jk yoga there was topic but i didn't discuss there quite well but i want to know you know that does not go hand in hand so in my opinion you know king and queen if they if there are there a king can be in love with a prostitute as well and queen can be in love with a beggar as well right there is no boundary for love but that does not mean the prostitute has to love the king. I love you does not mean you have to love me. You love me does not mean I have to love you. So there is always that kind of dichotomy there, right? So how do you justify that kind of thing? And people are using love as an excuse for their sensual pleasure. You know, in Hindi, I think that there is a statement, prem ka naam hawas ka kaam. And we, we, I think that, you know, people are doing there, you know, people use another people for their sensual gratification, giving that the name of love. And how do you justify that? Why are they not over, you know, able to express that? Saying directly, okay, I want to be with you. I, I, I like you. Let's go out, hang out, be with each other, you know, have sex, have sensual pleasure, be, do everything, but no relationship, no emotion. We, we have our own way of thinking. We have okay. our own goal. So why not we do that? So what's the question? Question is basically why we are not able to love or what what exactly is the question here that or, or the is, love word is abused used and abused uh, in a lot of context which may not exactly. be like yeah okay. exactly you know so that is the that is the nature of the world prashanta so if you have to understand the very nature of this material world is that first of all we are conditioned souls right we don't even know the true meaning of love is actually not a noun it is a verb you build those sentiments with proper mm -hmm. understanding and knowledge. It's not like the under the garb of, you know, calling it love, it is actually exploitation. So we spoke about three kinds of relationships, right? Where you take, 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 which is called um, uh, exploitation or lust, or you do give and take, okay? Which is called vepar or transaction. And that is where we typically operate. In the process, we keep on calling it love which is a misused term because truly love means eternal forgiveness. Love means even though you have a reason for the love to vanish or get destroyed, still it does not get destroyed. Love means you do it selflessly for the sake of other person. Tat suk sukhitvam. That is what true love is. So just because somebody is using that term loosely, we should not lose faith in the concept of love because it's a very deep thing. Right? If you look at the love is an emotion that governs this entire universe, mother, child, love, parent, kid, love, and love is no different for God also. Love is the only thing that can bind or enslave God, although he is supremely independent. So if people use it, that's their karma. That's because of their ignorance. We have the benefit of understanding it in more depth. So we need to correct ourselves without worrying about why the world is doing that. Yes, they are doing that. Everybody's this whole world is a dance of fulfilling your selfish interests. Nothing more than that. Okay. And you couple it with ignorance, then people will, you know, serve their interest by using words like love. I've fallen in love. 
I'm out of love. I no longer love you. All that is loosely used. But love, if you actually understand, it's a very deep thing. It's one of the purest emotions one can have. And that is the only emotion that can enslave God. In material world, we should look at, you know, having at least a balanced relationship or more towards selfless side as best as we can do. But just because the world is using it loosely, we should not lose faith in the concept of love. Okay. Just because we, are a, we have few match fixers does not mean the cricket game has become and diminished itself. Okay. So that is how I'll see it. But if you truly understand the definition of love, I would say this is the most purest emotion. And that needs to be harnessed more so on the path of spirituality because we are trying to build that relationship with God. And God is saying that. You know, although I'm supremely independent, but when a devotee loves me, I become his slave at that point. But in the world, that love is very difficult to find, but we need to at least uplift ourselves and, and get closer to that concept, even in our material world, as best as possible, where we are thinking about the other person first and about our interest later, right? And love triangles are common, right? Because your self-interest might get served from somebody then you may get bored and that person's self-interest may, that is how the Bollywood stories are made, right? Quadrangles or triangles, what's a big deal? They will fall in and fall out of love multiple times. Here, if you look at it, people marry three, four, five, six times. Uh, can you keep on falling in love time and again? I mean, it doesn't work that way. It's like your self-interest, which is limited to certain, certain things only. When mm -hmm. it's hampered, you move on. And then when it is obstructed there, you move on. And then it's obstructed, you move on. If it is financially crippling for you because the alimony mm -hmm. is too much, you may stick back. So it is forced stuff basically. But love right. is a verb mm -hmm. and not a noun. And mm -hmm. when it is a verb, means you bring in that sentiments, you cultivate that sentiments. It's not something mm -hmm. you wait for it to happen. And it is mm -hmm. subjective on other person's behavior on you. That is how we need to approach and think about it uh, from a from a scriptural standpoint, or especially if we are really serious about our spiritual journey. Otherwise, we will continue doing the same uh, circus that the world is doing, right? Calling it love and falling in love and falling out of love and this, that. End of the day, everybody's serving their self-interest, right? Calling it love mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So we need yeah, to carry yeah. ourselves in integrity and not worry too much about the world. Exactly. I, I, I agree to your point because, you know, I always thought love to be something divine rather than physical things. But in my opinion, you know, while, while I am operating in the world, for example, you know, in the worldly relationship, let's say, what I see in a girl for the first time, I see her body, right? I don't know. I don't have that, you know, MRI so, scan in my head. Love, if you no. look at, I got your point. Narad Bhakti Darshan says, yes. Guna Rahitam. So, of course, the, the worldly love is based on how you perceive the other person, right? Looks, exactly. mm -hmm. the job, and, profession, intelligence. True love is, should not be dependent on that. And then that it evaporates. What if you marry a very beautiful girl and tomorrow she wakes up as a 70-year-old? Where will your love go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, yeah that, that looks like a disagreement. So in my opinion, I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but in my opinion, the first step is always the physical attraction, you know, the sexual attraction. The second stage is you, you start knowing that dark side and the bright side of the person. You, you know, acknowledge that. You be with that. You tolerate that. And that becomes like a love thing, you know. And after that, you know, for example, you two cannot be in a relationship, let's say. You know, you have to go your own way. She has to go, you know, in the own way. But still, after parting away from each other, if you still wish the best of her, if she can still wish the best for you, you know, it becomes like a prayer. You see the happiness in her eyes. She sees the happiness in your eyes. Now, that is the thing which can be termed as true love, even though, you know, marriage is not possible in every love because parental issues is there, you know, caste issue is there, financial issues, common goal issues, everything is like that. But even after parting away, if you can wish the best for other person, then that can be termed as true love, in my opinion, right? What they, are very noble, they are very noble sentiments. Yes, if you can harbor that, nothing like it for sure. But yeah, every love story becomes a little complicated. And then if you can survive that without having any bitterness, that is mm -hmm. how one maturity is, right? Mm -hmm. It may not be purely true love, but at least you are mature enough to handle it gracefully. That's all I can say. Okay, mm -hmm. but true love is a very deep term. Okay, we have spoken about that concept. We can talk offline more about it. Great, okay. great. Okay, all right. We can talk offline if you have any other thing, but let's move on. Uh, anybody wanted to sing today? Sandhya ji, did you want to sing? We have oh, two yeah. Sandhya ji today, okay? So which Sandhya ji is going to sing? 
Uh, I'm fine if she wants to sing. No, 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 please go ahead. So we have two, Abhishek and Sandhya ji, please go ahead. We'll Do have we have time, Manitin ji? I know we are over, so we'll probably wrap it up in next five minutes. Okay. Hiridi sai dvarakamai prashanti vasi sai ram Hiridi vasi sai dvarakamai Prashanti Vasi Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram Ek Naam Sundar Naam Sai Ram Sai Ram Ek Naam Sundar Naam Shiridi Sai Dwarakamai Prashanti Vasi Sai Ram Allah Ishwar Sai Ram Pati Puri Kehe Bhagavan Allah Ishwar Sai Ram Pati Puri Kehe Bhagavan Daya Karo Daya karo, daya karo, he Bhagavan. Daya karo, krupa karo, raksha karo, he Bhagavan. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, ek naam, sundar naam. Thank you. Thank you, Sandhya ji. Very nice. I'm glad you... Uh, you chant periodically, which is a very good practice. And I hope you're practicing it at home as well. It's a very nice way to engage your mind. And thank you so much for reciting it. Radhe, Radhe. Um, yes, Abhishek, please go ahead. What are you going to yes. chant? Uh, okay. Uh, video view on. Chalo kar leta. <laughs> yeah, Next time. Good. Uh, <laughs> always good. Okay. Radhe, Radhe, everyone. Uh, actually, right now I'm in the ashram. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? No, I'm in the ashram. Oh. Yeah. Swamiji, like, uh, morning, I went to the tour. Okay. So, now I'm really alone. No one can see us. After all, we're going to go to the ashram. Okay. Uh, Shri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Haran Bhava Bhaya Darunam Shri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Haran Bhava Bhaya Darunam Navakanjalo Chana Kanja Mukha Kar Kanja Pada Kanja Arunam Shri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajamana Haran Bhava Bhayada Arunam Shri Ram Shri Ram Radha Radha very nice, short and sweet. Very nice, Abhishek. Thank you so much. Loved it. So, with that, we come to the end of today's session. We will continue our discussion tomorrow. So, tomorrow we will do our quiz, poll based quiz. And is ignorance a bliss? We are going to, I think that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. So we have a hard stop. So, we'll do a short, I mean, we'll, we'll pace it accordingly. But thank you again for uh, uh, you know your enthusiastic participation and uh, your engagement and turning your videos on and uh, taking rat and all the stuff that I throw in good spirit. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a good day and a great rest of your evening. Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Nathanji. Thank you, everyone.